Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope everybody's been well. Thank you again for being back in my space. You know, I was just listening. I don't know why I put myself through this, but I understand the tools of misinformation and its effectiveness, or rather detrimental effectiveness. I was listening in the background here to a video that was recommended to me of Tariq Nasheed. And the title says, are there agents among our social media spaces? I'm gonna get right into it, but before I do, let me say this. As a black man in America, growing up, and even till this day, I've never been bothered by people who need to get their intellectual game on. People who, for whatever reason, can't articulate or dialogue with people who are at a certain level of understanding. And some people sometimes take that to offense and think you're talking down on them. But again, as the famous quote goes, to sum it up, those that are, don't understand, we teach. And those of us that do understand, this is my quote, you're never supposed to stop learning. So in that space, I understand that there's people sometimes who speak on things that they don't know. So there's no effect. So these are not the people that push men like Tariq Nasheed and their scam tactics. Men like Tariq Nasheed and their need to have a base push a narrative they don't believe in themselves. It's the people who are of so-called higher learning, so-called professionals, so-called people with titles, who on one hand will promote themselves and disguise themselves as someone worthy of a dialogue of anyone from the diaspora. Who presents themselves as someone who truly believes in unity. Then they'll go in a space like this behind me. A guy like Tariq's radio space. And they'll, by the way, these are the people that will never show you their face. They will never reveal their names. Even give you an alias. They will always hide behind the xenophobia rhetoric. They will never stand on their two. And here's the thing. I can respect anyone, racist, anyone with any type of bigotry to the degree that they stand on it, that they're not running from it, that you show me who you are. And that's the problem. A lot of these people are calling in or are... Twitter banging, you know, and I call you weak, ma'am and sirs. You so-called people who's been to school, so-called people that may have family members that revere you, students that revere you if, if you're a teacher, educator, clients if you're a therapist, if you are in the realm of professional professional discourse, someone who holds themselves to an esteem that is open arms for dialogue, but then yet you go to Tariq's space and you spit all this vitriol. These are the people that will shake your hands, no matter what your background is, and I don't get it. I really don't get it, people, because you got to stand on what you say. Don't hide behind another man who clearly is used to doing this for the last 25 years. That's the respect I can give him if he actually stood on that. He himself has changed narratives on what he's for and what he's against many times. And let's touch on that. This man is quick to tell you that FBA means your lineage is solely based upon 
the aboriginal roots of black Americans that came from black American slaves or rather black natives of America, which can be so debatable for so many reasons. Were there black people in America pre-slavery? Of course, we circumnavigated the entire globe. Of course, so that's without question. But to say that you can only be FBA and to only entertain people of FBA lineage, but then you go to these spaces to argue back and forth with so-called tetters, I don't understand that. Tariq speaks against so-called democratic shields, whether they be a Roland Martin, whether they be so many talking heads of the Democratic Party, then what was he doing at the revolt meeting? What was he doing there? You was amongst so many people that you deemed to be talking heads and democratic shields, and you stood there and didn't call them out. You know, the way you have the courage to do so when your minions are pushing that narrative with you that are blindly following you, never question you, never vet you. You speak on vetting so much. These people just go along, you know, to get the, you talk about the get along, go along gang. Well, that's your entire following, sir. Go along, get along. You ever notice that any organization you're a part of when there's no contention or rather no efforts to engage and proper dialogue. Proper dialogue means there's things we have to talk about. There may be disagreements. It's a hundred percent agreement. So that tells me a lot of people that follows Tariq are following him based off their projections of how they see themselves, what they're going through, the pain they're suffering through. And you need to lament or put that on people or, or something that can block the finger pointing towards you yourself, something that may be keeping you from realizing that you're responsible for yourself. You're responsible for your conditions. You're responsible for where you're headed to. Nonetheless, I digress. This man was on a revolt platform with people that he speaks with such an angst when he's in his safe place amongst the minions that pushes his narratives. There was a moment, and I challenge you all to find a way to watch that, that event. Brother Riza Islam, who I, I have such a high esteem for, he challenged the likes of Se Secure the Tribe, the Tariq Nasheeds, the brother, I forget, forget this guy's name, but Phil Scott. You know, guys of those likings who have such a separatist narrative of how we should approach things, RZA basically came and stabbed that whole movement with just a few words. And at the core of his words were all these groups, the black Israelites, you know, FBA. And he specifically said those words, that does not help us move as a people because folks, your real enemies, I'm not gonna even go into that, don't look at you guys in terms of this tribe, that tribe. He said specifically, they look at you as a quote unquote nigger. Again, I'm saying that for educational purposes, you two. They look at you as that. They don't take the time to distinguish how different you guys are, just like the FBA don't take their time to distinguish how different Africa is in terms of their group, their cultures, you lump everybody in one group, whether we're from the Caribbean, whether you're from here, there, you're doing the same thing, dare I say, as a damn clan member. And Brother Isla, Riza lamented on that. The brother basically let Tariq sit there amongst his cronies who he doesn't like, supposedly, the other Democratic shield, and let them know where they stand amongst the diaspora. You know, it's crazy. Because I started this video talking about how it's not his flunkies, the, the minions, people of basically no intelligence. And I say that not in a derogatory way, but people basically of no educational background or research background 
to dive deep in the depths of what they're talking about. It's people that takes on talking points that Tariq gives them or other leaders of other groups give them. They can't form an original thought. So a lot of times you're dissuaded by having a conversation with these people because you already know they're speaking to the prisms of another man or woman. This is not something that comes from themselves. So you don't even know if you're arguing them or those that they speak for. But I started the video off to say, it's not his flunkies that you have to worry about pushing his narratives. It's the people that comes from spaces of higher learning, spaces of professionalism that you would think would have a decor of etiquette. Etiquette in how we say things, how we do things. Not just to not offend, but pushing false narratives. And that mis misinformation will reach the mind of someone young who's already disenfranchised in the way they feel, who's already down in how they look at society in terms of how society looks at them, who already is piggybacking off others who are saying that you're nothing but a victim. So this entices them to stay on that narrative, to stay on that avenue, never really looking at themselves in a way to say, I'm bigger than these titles. I'm bigger than the stereotypes. You know, it's a cliche, but you can be that that you say you are. You know, you don't channel these children to aspire. Imagine someone 15, 16, who's been through so much issues. Listen to someone like Tariq or one of his minions pushing that narrative. Now that's the ideology this child has. That's not going to push him to challenge the status quo, that's going to make him want to lash out at an easier target, someone that looks like him, someone that looks like her. And that's where this narrative is becoming detrimental. But again, this brother puts a title that says, are there agents among our social media spaces? Let me tell you why Tariq put up this video. Tariq hates to be challenged. Tariq knows in his own space, nobody is going to have a proper dialogue with him. An arena where there's questions asked, where you put a man to test. He likes to say he wants to vet everybody, but no one in his space vets him. But he puts up this video because recently, I forget the woman's name, but there was this young lady that asked other people, specifically people in the African spaces of Twitter, why do you even entertain someone like Tariq who has clearly shown he's not here for a real conversation of real answers, of being asked real questions. He's here to make fun of you. And I've listened to that invitation they gave him to speak in that space, one of these African spaces. By the way, some of you brothers, I got my own issues with you. I will be making my videos about you guys. I just respect the diaspora, us as black people as a whole so much. I don't do things like this, but I'm on to you guys next. But right now we're dealing with FBA business, specifically Tariq Nasheed, because he is the face and the author of this phony movement. But in that space with the African Twitter users, they allowed Tariq to talk down on them. They had general, sincere questions and Tariq's rebuttals to those questions, never answers, was making fun of them, talking about how they fled, they flee, and they genuinely wanted to have a discourse with him. But that brother, once again, the comedian that he ever is, jokes. But there was this young lady who intervened and asked all those brothers in that space, how do you feel? to allow a man who has no respect for you to get on board here and humiliate you like this. Once again, by the way, him even entering those African Twitter spaces shows he doesn't even believe in this hate that he fuels others to have. He doesn't even believe in it. Tariq will take on anything that gives him promotion. Him being at the Revolt Summit, to me, Anyone of intelligence should have saw how much of a hypocrite he was, because if you're truly a conservative person, someone who really sees the deception the Democrats push time and time again, 
Why would you go to that space that had nothing but democratic shields? This man begs for attention. This man needs to be in a space where he's accumulating more and more followers. Notice how, and I think I would have to make a separate video for this, but there was another brother who tried to push a movement. I think he had some permits to do his own reparation movements. And unbeknownst to me, he asked Tariq to be a part of that. Now I understand where Tariq is coming from, where he doesn't just want to put himself in any movement and any organ organized platforms without knowing who the person is, properly vetted basically. But my thing is, I find it very ironic that brother was able to get his permit to push his agenda for reparations, something Tariq has been talking about forever and now seemingly is envious of those that do get the goals accomplished. All this man has for you guys is excuse after excuse after excuse and none of you step up to properly, properly check this brother. But another black man who's FBA like you all he was received and met with was ridicule, was met with doubt, was met with uncertainty, not even giving the man a chance to see where he's coming from. Because truth be told, Tariq felt jealous that it was not him who was head starting that movement, a movement that actually started to put boots on the ground. Unlike you, Tariq, you know, all of a sudden he puts a video out saying there's agents in our social media spaces by you know everyone's an agent that dares to question everyone's an agent that dares to sit back and do the same thing Tariq tells his own followers to do don't just throw yourself onto something properly research it check it out do some investigation go in depths of what it is this person is bringing to you but the minute you do that with him you're an agent now, this is the thing he's throwing out to his followers to do when there's somebody that may not agree with his stance on things. Now they're an agent. Typical, regular black Americans who work every day, who have families, but there's the question. Now they're an agent. People, this is a deflection to never hold yourself accountable. This is a deflection to never have a proper dialogue. This is a deflection to hide the fact that Tariq has been a con artist for a long time. The proof is in the pudding. I don't want to overuse my time on this video. So once again, I will have another video put up. But I just thought that was rich. That this man continues to deflect and deflect from having a proper discourse. And I haven't seen one person check him on that. Now, I expect people who haven't reached a certain level of understanding and who are, by their own nature, are just followers. So they're going to follow everything Tariq says. This is why all of a sudden, it's not a big group. It's a small group of people all of a sudden are using terms like tether, terms like flee. They're even using this very moist term. By the way, Tariq, you're kind of moist, brother. I just got to tell you that. You're kind of moist. All these little guys over here are starting to use bussy and all these words. I mean, like, again, no original thought process. They're saying words like you flee. They're literally asking you things the way the Nazis asked people in Germany back in the 30s and 40s. Are you a Jew or not? And that's how they do, do business with you. These are all people of European backgrounds, you know. But they're asking one another, are you a Jew or not? That's how his organization feels. They, rather than sit down and have real conversations, they'll say things like, oh, you fled. You could have been born here, raised here, fought for the military the way I did. The first thing they'll ask you is because they only ask this if you disagree with their points. They'll say, did you flee? Oh, you're a tether. You're a this. And it's like Daddy Tariq feeds these people these words to use, you know, but Tariq, I truly wish I was somebody of significant that you would have the kahunas, the testicular fortitude to sit down and have a real dialogue. It doesn't even have to be with me. I would really want to see someone who disagrees with you that has original thought. Sit down and have a real dialogue with you, brother, because you moving funny, man. 
You moving funny. It's not fair that you're using a lot of these people that you know come from certain economical backgrounds, certain intellectual, I'll say, shortcomings where you can manipulate them. And that's the only people you can do that with. Now, the other folks who have intelligence, who come from a good, you know, fabric, those people just have their own inner, inner bitterness and they need projections to help push. I get that. Trust me. You could have the biggest degrees in the world, but if you got something wrong inside of you, you're going to want to stick to certain people that's pushing narratives that you need to make you feel better, that you need to lash out against. I know how this is because it's a certain group that has been responsible for a lot of this stuff that you guys are afraid to call out. I don't have to say it. You know what it is. That's why you only come after people that look like you. Listen, folks. This is a sidebar. I really appreciate the people that has been trying to rock with me. I'm praying that you guys stick with me. My platform will only get bigger and better, more structured, you know, cause I know how this works. If you're just on a phone doing this thing, people don't rock with you, you know, for whatever reason, they like to see big numbers, big subscribers, and that's when they click. But I come from a good place, man, you know, right now, one of my jobs is working at task force to end homelessness. So I really speak and act upon what I talk about. This is my whole life. So, you know, I tell you, give me a chance and you won't have no regrets. Also check out my twin brother's place, uh, page and his channel, I Smoke Hip Hop by DJ Bless One. Check him out too, man. You know, we're in a space where people are starting to wake up and we're at the age in terms of time where we don't need leaders anymore. This thing you got up here, a noggin, is created for a reason, a reason. So I ask all you Tariq Nasheed followers and all you FBA separatist groups and to the liking, have original thought. Have an original thought, man. Have an original thought. One.